Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Bob. Welcome back to my channel. Just like to uh, talk about um, someone who has been around my part of the country for a while. That's Tom Brady. You know, he came out uh, and he won a Super Bowl again with this great team, the Patriots. You know, back in the, the 1990s, I think it was 1990, Bill Belichick's defense came up um, and played the Patriots the last game of the year. Patriots were a very bad team. But I remember watching that game, and I said to myself, I never seen a team as, you know, I think the, Giant, the Giants went to win the Super Bowl that year. Never seen a team as confident as, as that team. And uh, I, I was just totally blown away by that. Well, as good fortune has it, you know, Belichick uh, came along to New England in uh, the 90s, mid-90s as a coach and uh, eventually he became the head coach in 2000. But my message today is to Tom Brady. You know, I just read um, an article that, that uh, says that Tom Brady is a pagan. And uh, and then I mean the article, Tom, it's like he grew up Catholic, but he doesn't practice anymore. And um, he believes everything, basically. Um, and it sounds like he's a little confused as to what to believe. And, you know, Tom, this is my letter to you, if, a video letter. If you ever get this... Um, you know, you're probably like me, Tom. You know, I grew up Catholic, but found it very, um, I don't know, just left me naked, basically, for lack of a better term, spiritually naked. Uh, um, so I walked away. I figured I was going to hell anyway. And, you know, my attitude was eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow. You know, I'm going to die, so who cares? It might as well just party, party. However, unbeknownst to me, that's actually scripture. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think the first problem is um, is we have to um, trust the Bible. We first read the Bible, and then can we trust the Bible? But we, we, we have a preconceived idea from Catholicism or whatever, let's face it, that is wrong, you know, I mean, like I said, I thought I was going to hell because I couldn't be good enough for, for Jesus, for God, but actually Jesus died on the cross for me and all my sins are covered past, present, and future, and I'm saved by grace through faith, you know, and, and this, this is a, a gift of God, not by works. Otherwise, I would boast. That's directly from Ephesians uh, chapter 2. Ephesians 1, you know, says, I was predestined. You know, so you read a book of Ephesians, which is a book the Catholics really don't read. It's in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. It's written by the Apostle Paul. And that could change your life. That can give you an understanding. You know, the Bible has um, great information that tells you what God has done, you know, but the Catholics, they change all that, and then they hide what the Bible says, so they can control people, and they make people feel uh, far from God, in my opinion, and they don't emphasize a uh, personal relationship with Jesus, and as a result of that, people die with no confidence and that's where they had to come up with this purgatory my opinion so why don't you just get into the bible and and um once you get to that point where you can trust the bible first of all you go in thinking it's bad news then you don't want to trust the bible but if you if you hear about the good news then you might be more willing to trust it and be more open to trusting it, because we're not open to trusting the Bible because we think there's no hope there. But if there's, we, we get an inkling of hope, then we can trust the, the Bible. So that's why the Christian's job is to preach the good news, to 
preach the hope that's in Jesus. You know, instead of, you know, telling people not to read the Bible and, and it's all Ten Commandments and, you know, you got to get into this religious system and and maybe you might go to heaven after you, you go to purgatory is not what the Bible teaches. It's two different, completely different religious systems. One is, you know, Christianity, true Christianity isn't even religion. It's just God doing it all. We're just saying thank you. And that's what we need because none of us are good enough, you know. And we all fall short. All these other religions are man trying to reach up to God. And, um, you know, basically say, hey, God, I'm a nice guy. Let me in, you know. I'm a nice guy. Hey, let me in. But no, Jesus, God says no one's a nice guy. And that's why Jesus went to the cross. So if you believe in Jesus, then you're reconciled to God. So you're doing it on God's terms. And there's a, 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 a sacrifice substituted for you by the blood of God, blood of, blood of the Lamb, you know, slain before the foundation of the earth, but done in, in, in over time. That was for 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 his his sheep. So if you call out to Jesus, like I did, I just said, "Okay, Jesus, you cross over. You get spiritually born because you said it in faith, but by God's grace, and you are right with God, and you live forever. You you know you'll have an immortal body. You'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. You know." Um, You'll have a body like Christ, the Bible says. You live on the streets of gold. You have, you know, you have a real mansion in heaven. None of these temporary mansions. Look at William Randolph Hearst. I was reading about him last night. He his um his castle in, in California has as much and as all his art collections. You know, people today, I don't think they really collect like he did. This guy was amazing. His collections of arts and what have you would cover the half the state of Rhode Island, they say. And there's a famous story of him. Um, I was reading about it last night. He wanted this really famous painting or, or something, and, and he told his men to go get it. He didn't care what it cost, and it was very rare to find it and go get it. And then about a couple months go by, and they realized that he had already bought it. And it was in his collections. <laughs> he didn't even know it. Incredible. But let me tell you, Tom, here's, a, here's something you could do. Just start with the book of Romans, right? And three simple verses. And this will get you into heaven. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay? That's Romans 3, verse 23. You can look it up. You agree with that. Okay, most people would. Now, the wages of sin, what we get for our sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 6, 23. And then very simply, Romans 10, verse 9, everyone who calls on Jesus will be saved. So Jesus is important. So call on him. He's better than these, um, you know, good luck charms that you have. These, these altars that you ha you're creating, and um, these pagan, pagan rituals that you go through. Um, I do respect you as a football player. You're very um, talented. You don't make much many mistakes. I said that from the day. Uh, you care, you know, so I do respect your football ability. But if you're like me, you know nothing about Jesus because nobody talks about Jesus. And the Bible is suppressed. It's, 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 um, it's set up as a straw man and knocked down. But you got to read these things yourself. Don't let somebody else, you know... Don't let somebody else tell you what the Bible says. Find out for yourself.
I mean, somebody could tell you what the Bible says and it's the right thing. Don't get me wrong, all right? But find out for yourself. Trust but verify. Ronald Reagan, remember? Remember that play in that Super Bowl? Reagan. Well, I got to play for you, Tom Brady. Trust but verify. That's from Ronald Reagan. <laughs> all righty. So, um, on three, all right? Hot one, hot two, hot three, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Romans 10, verse 9. Everyone who calls on Jesus will be saved. Hut, hut. <laughs> All right, have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for visiting my channel. Bye-bye.